Do you guys know who Taraji P. Henson is? Do you know who Keith Lee is? Okay, I don't know if you guys know who these people are, but they're celebrities. Taraji is a mega celebrity, movie star. I'm sure you've seen her in a lot of things. She's gorgeous. I had such a thing for her in my 20s. She was definitely a celebrity woman that I was like, marry me, please. And then I got my shit together and realized this woman might be straight. This might be a heterosexual woman. And then she defended Jesse Smollett and I was my, I got a nick. I got a nick for her. It's, you know, it happens. So Taraji P. Henson, she hosted the BET Awards and Taraji had this like totally weird moment with Keith Lee. But there's also another Another TikToker named Jordan. He's on TikTok. He's popular. People like him for sure. I, I don't really watch Jordan enough to know his like thing, but I think he just kind of makes commentary videos about like random TikTok trends. I'm not sure if anybody's a Jordan fan, let me know. But basically the BET Awards happened. Shout out to all their performances because they were amazing. But this awkward moment happened at the award ceremony. But Taraji is in the green. Okay. She's going to walk up to who she thinks Keith Lee is, and she's going to do her little banter as host to Keith Lee, okay. Are you? <laughs> Hi, how are you? <sighs> Mr. Keith Lee, I know what you're thinking right now. This is about a 10.9 out of a 10. Uh, oh. <laughs> okay, so Jordan makes a face and realizes like, oh my God, she thinks I'm Keith Lee. He like points over to Keith and then Keith's wife who's sitting in middle of Jordan and Keith Lee is also like, you know, so she does this like, okay. I got caught up in my own inner monologue. I'm so sorry. You're thinking this is a 10, a, a 10.9 out of 10. My bad. You fine too, so call me. Give him his flower. <laughs> <laughs> uh, oh! Let's give him flower here. Yes. Call me. Oh, and we're done. So she's doing like a fake flirting thing. That's not that uncommon. You know, it's like a whole shtick. And so you're wondering like, what happened? Why did it get weird? Like, was this planned? What is this? And it's just awkward because Taraji's, God bless her, she's not exactly a young woman and she's certainly not on TikTok, okay? So then we have to remember like, TikTok is a bubble. It's its own ecosystem. Not everybody knows who Keith Lee is, even if he does have 16 million followers on TikTok. It doesn't mean people know who he is. Remember, Taraji is a much more popular celebrity, and maybe you don't even know her. You know what I mean? She was on Empire, that music show. She was on um, uh, What Men Want, the remake, What Women Want, but the remake, What Men Want. She was on Curious Case of Benjamin Button. She, she's been in a whole bunch of things, okay? And so maybe you know her, maybe you don't know her. And that's even crazy because she's pretty high up in celebrityism. But then on top of that, you've got a TikToker. And normal, that's what I'm saying. Like, this is an ecosystem. All these celebrities, all these YouTubers, all these streamers who think they're important. Remember, your million followers is nothing compared to 400 million followers or a billion followers for some of these celebrities. Like, just a reminder that like Brad Pitt or who Trump is or some of these celebrities who like people know throughout the world in some aspect, they don't know you. No offense. Like, you know what I'm saying? So, okay. So then you go to Keith Lee's TikTok. So this is Keith Lee. You know, he does like food reviews in his car and he's going to go ahead and talk about his experience at the event since there was a lot of drama that came out of this. Last night was the BT Awards, and right now, it's something on my mind. Let's talk about it. First and foremost, I want to start by saying, I am not upset at Taraji P. Henson by any stretch of the imagination. And not only that, in my opinion, she smoked it last night. I don't think for one second Taraji had any ill will or any ill intentions behind the situation. The situation happened the way it did. It is what it is. I made a video last night where I had the rose that was given to me in my hand, and I let it fall on the floor. The reason I did this had nothing to do with Taraji P. Henson. The reason I dropped it on the floor is that I wholeheartedly believe that wasn't my rose. That wasn't my rose. That wasn't my moment. It was given to me, but it wasn't mine. And I always say, I don't want nothing that ain't mine. I want was meant for me, nothing less, nothing more. The entire segment on the production side felt extremely rushed. Not only did it feel rushed, it did not feel intentional. It did not feel purposeful. I'm forever thankful for every room that I'm in. I was more than thankful and more than grateful to just sit there and enjoy the show. Me and my wife, we looked amazing. We felt amazing. We was enjoying the show. I've always spoke about my social anxiety. And for me, just to get out and be in that moment, was more than enough for me. So to take me and my wife out of our seats, put us in different seats, give Taraji no direction to who we are or what we do, felt extremely unprepared and unprofessional to me. I'm personally a fan of Taraji. I've been for years and I always will be. 
I love to see her get the recognition that she deserved in that moment and had a platform and a stage that she's always deserved for this situation to take away from her moment and our moment was unfair to both of us. Another example of this is a picture of my wife has been going around and it was a small part caught from an entire moment to make it seem like she had an attitude with Taraji. My wife and myself understand the flirting that Taraji was doing was fully improv and fully joke. It was a hard situation for all of us to be in. We fully understand she made it up on the fly. I was there to just enjoy the show. I was invited. No situations in life in general. I never longed for the spotlight. If I wanted the spotlight, I would have accepted a quarter of the opportunities that's been presented to us. But none of those opportunities were for me or my family. If you understand that, you understand it. If you don't, mm -hmm. I'm okay with that. I'm always going to be myself. I've always been myself. Nothing about this journey, about this ride, about where we at or where we going to be is going to change me. Never have and never will. Never once was I upset that Taraji didn't know who I was. Everything that's for me will be for me. Everything that's for my family will be for my family. Everything that's for you will be for you. When it's supposed to be, how it's supposed to be, with no confusion. I said that last night and that was still misconstrued and I stand on it a thousand percent. Whatever room I'm supposed to be in, whoever's supposed to know me, whenever they're supposed to know me, it will happen. How it's supposed to happen. Last night, while I appreciate the opportunity, it wasn't my moment. And that's okay. I'm cool with that. Mm -hmm. and for every single person that's been on this journey with me and that's still on this journey with me, I'm forever grateful. I appreciate y'all. I can't say it enough. God bless you. Have an amazing day. Y'all be safe. We all humans. We all make mistakes. It is what it is. I just wish they would have set both of us up for most success in that situation. That's it. God bless you. This is super significant. One, his fans were definitely on board. They loved his response. A lot of people thought it was respectful as Keith Lee has a pretty good reputation as being so. But you know what really stood out for me as a content creator is when he says it wasn't my time, it means that it truly wasn't about him. Last minute direction happened. The show used him to try to boost their numbers with Gen Z, but it wasn't because he earned the spot. It was because he happened to be there. And there's a difference there. When you're being honored at a show, when you're given a rose, when people are actually like saying, I love your work, they they also know who you are. When Gordon Ramsay walks into a restaurant, people know why he's Gordon Ramsey. He earned his spot. He earned his roses. And I think that that plays sort of a role in how we view people with status is Keith Lee isn't there yet. He's not where he wants to be because he wants it to be real. He doesn't want to be manufactured. And a lot of these people are manufactured given opportunities because the people want to use them to boost their own credibility. And look, it's always a symbio symbiotic relationship. It's always like you boost my numbers, I'll boost your numbers. But there's a way to do it with integrity and there's a way to do it without it. And I think in this instance, you know, these kids who are on TikTok, these young people who are definitely not normal celebrities were given an opportunity that I'm glad they took and everything, but it wasn't their bubble. And their bubble, that bubble didn't know how to react to them. And so it was kind of awkward. But I think that that's the problem is that you're on the internet and people in your sphere think like, oh, you got to know who Keith Lee is, right? Not necessarily. In the same way that that cop who arrested Justin Timberlake didn't know who he was. That's why bubbles are so important as a concept. We aren't all living with the same perception of the world. I saw so many TikTokers say like, wow, I'm really in an ecosystem here in TikTok. Or wow, I thought because he was famous on TikTok, he was famous everywhere. And wow, that's a bubble pop. You're having like a realization of, oh, the world isn't surrounded by the things that I think are interesting. There's a girl on TikTok. She's so sweet. She has like lavender purple hair and she does like niche content. We've covered her, her hair here before. I can't remember her name. But every time she covers a bubble, I know. I'm like, oh, I know that bubble. But then she'll cover bubbles I've never heard of. I'm like, oh, this really is niche. It's like you only know about it if you're in the community. And that's kind of how you know your niche in a way. Do people outside of my community know about the thing that I'm into? And if they don't, you're pretty niche. And at the same time, if people start to know about the thing you're into, you can kind of know you're going mainstream which is sort of sad because you're losing the thing that made you niche in the first place. But niche communities are niche communities for a reason. And Keith Lee is niche, but with a non-niche aesthetic. Like food critique isn't niche, but the way he does it is specific because he does it on TikTok in his car. It's not a traditional way to critique food or restaurants. And the way he does it is like, have you heard of the Keith Lee kind of um, Keith Lee? Uh, oh, what do they call it? Basically, everywhere Keith Lee goes and approves of the restaurant, the restaurant like triples in business. And then if Keith Lee doesn't give you a good review, basically, it's like, uh oh, you know, he tries to be very good about it. He tries to be very nice when he gives a bad review, but it does impact that person's business because he has a very parasocial audience that believes him to be one of the greatest critique or people who critique food critics 
um, because they think he's the most honest. When people, and that's kind of the brand, Keith Lee is the honest brand, the wholesome brand. So this moment felt weird for a lot of people because it was so not wholesome. Now, just to solidify in your minds how wholesome Keith Lee is known to be, let me find you this clip really fast. Uh, it's amazing. I'm blessed to be here. We look amazing. My wife looks amazing. God is amazing. I'm just here. To, I'm thankful. Everyone wants you to review their food. Who is the one star celebrity that you would most like to link up with? Maybe go grab some food together? Uh, my wife. Yeah, as long as me and my wife can go sit in the car, eat some food, I'm more than happy. I got to respect a man with an answer like this. Exactly. Isn't that so sweet? So like what celebrity would you want to link up with? Who would you want? He's like my wife. And I'm like, oh. Like, that's such a sweet answer. That's such th that's the wholesome answer. That's the right answer. You know, that is the right answer. My wife. You know what I mean? In some ways, that is the best answer. And I think he means it. You know, it's just like a cute answer. So that's, that's, that's Keith Lee. That's why he wins over hearts and minds. Now, I've heard some people try to make controversy about Keith Lee. I've never really seen it take off or found any, like, proof of anything people have alleged. But I don't know. Maybe one day... A bubble will pop and we'll find out Keith Lee has done a horrible thing. But for now, he seems like he might be one of the good ones, which is kind of nice. And even the good ones have flaws. So let's leave some room for that. You know what I mean? Let's leave, let's leave some room for the trauma and the dysfunction. But overall, that basically was the controversy, which I think for us and just for me as a content creator is a nice humbling reminder that just because you're big on the internet, doesn't mean anybody knows who you are. And that's that's nice to remember because there really is this like fear of, uh, you know, once you're on the internet, you can never disappear again. You can always be somebody else, no matter how big you get in the world. If Sean Connery can live in a place where nobody knows who he is and it was an island, you know what I'm saying? Like you can figure it out, girl. To be fair, he died before the internet completely went crazy, but you know what I mean. You can always recreate your life and you can always pop a bubble and join a different one. Da, 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 da.